Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Show. Thursday night football, week eight, got the Vikings in LA taking on the Rams. I've got best bets and player prop projections for both teams in this one. Also want to run the giveaway back. We finally had a winner for the first touchdown score in last game uh, on Monday night, at least for that Bucks game, not in the Chargers game as there wasn't even a touchdown for the Chargers, um, but we're going to be doing it again. So jump in the comments. I need the first touchdown score for both teams. I also need to know how they're getting in the end zone. Is it a reception or a rush touchdown? Obviously, if you want to throw a defensive touchdown in there, you're welcome to. So jump in the comments and give me that. Eligible to win the 50 bucks in this week's giveaway. If that all sounds good to you. Give the video a like and let's get right into it. As we get into this Minnesota offense, quick reminder that we've got the 5.30 p.m. Eastern live show running every weekday now. So come in there, bring your bets and jump in the comments. We go over that stuff together as I share my screen, show you the tools that I'm using to find the best value on all these plays. But let's get right into the Vikes here and talk about this offense because it's an interesting offense in that it's effective. It scores a good amount of points. It gets out to early leads and it does really well on third downs. But the offensive line isn't that good. I wouldn't really be banking on too many rushing yards against a good rush defense, which this Rams team is not. Uh, they are an awful rush defense. They give up the second most rushing yards in the league with the fifth worst e rush EPA. So there's not much push on that uh, defensive line. They have the second worst adjusted yards before contact as well. So they're really not getting any push or getting into the backfield to disrupt the rushing game. They also blitz the eighth most, but only get the 18th best pressure percentage on the quarterback. So they're blitzing and dialing up blitzes, but they're not effective or getting to the quarterback. And that's good for Minnesota because they don't have a very good pass blocking scheme going right now. They are 27th in allowing uh, blitz per, uh, QB per pressure percentage, I should say, on Sam Darnold, who's looked like he's almost gotten hurt a couple times this season as a result. As we get into Sam Darnold stuff here, also a quick reminder about the WAP.com link. If you want to make sure that you're not missing a single bet that I'm making, go ahead and jump into the description of the video, get the link. Also get 40% off if you want the NBA season pass, which just started as well. Happy NBA season to everybody. That'll get you a nice discount if you want to use that link in the description of the video. All right, looking at Sam Darnold. And when we talk about Sam Darnold right now, we really need to talk about game script because that is going to matter so much for this team, right? You look at Sam Darnold, not that many pass attempts. His number's at 31 and a half right now. He averages 27 and has gone, gone under this number in all of the games that they played this season. So why is it so high? Because I don't know that it's going to be as positive of a game script as we've seen. This is the same thing for the Rams. They've been terrible this season on defense, and they still are, but their offense should be better with Cooper Cup back in the lineup and playing wide receiver for them on the other side of the ball. So that might make Sam Donald have to pass a few more times than he's used to. We'll see if they're able to come out, though, early and get the lead. We're talking about the one of the best first-half teams in the Vikings. They have the actual best point differential in the first half, winning by nine points per first half so far this season as opposed to the Rams who go down early and are a bottom five first half team in their point differential points allowed and points that they score both bottom five for the Rams. Once again, though, no Cooper Cup is going to hurt this team a ton. Um, and now they got him back. So it's the sharp seem to be on the Rams. Uh, there was plus three and a half for the Rams that got bet down. So now it's just plus three. Uh, I think a lot of the, we know a lot of the sharps came in and said, well, if you're going to give me that extra half a point on a field goal, for the uh, for the Vi uh, the Rams against the Vikings, I'm going to take it with Cooper cutback. So they're seeing some stuff. Obviously, they think the pass game is going to be successful for the Vikes in this one. So what to do with Jay Jet, Justin Jefferson? Everything I just said about Sam Darnold applies to him. If they build the lead early, they're not going to need to throw as much. We know that to be the case. The Rams limit the wide receiver position, but do they like, or do they just not have to guard the wide receiver position because they're always uh, losing, right? And so because they're always losing and the other team is winning, the other team is running the ball. That's why you see such few pass attempts against them and such few wide receiver receptions and receiving yards. This is Justin Jefferson. And if you want to look, look at the cornerbacks for the Rams to help me make my point that they're not a good pass defense. They just don't ever get passed upon because they're always losing, right? So cornerback Darius Williams, he's going to play on the left side. 65.9 grade on PFF. That's bottom like uh, 40, I believe bottom 30th percentile. Not good, right? Most people are better than him. Let's put it that way. And then on the other side, you've got Kobe Durant, 71.5, a little bit better, still not in the top 50. So two cornerbacks in the top top basically like you know 50th percentile 
not going to be helpful against Justin Jefferson. I definitely wouldn't be fading him. I'm just scared that this game script isn't going to be as neutral as maybe the Sharps even think. So it, Jay Jets, unfortunately, a little bit of a stay away from me. So what about Aaron Jones? It kind of seems like whoever runs the ball for Minnesota is going to be really successful. But is it going to be Aaron Jones? Because he's been an absolute monster this season. Like, there's no question about it. He has six yards per touch. So you put the ball in his hands, you're getting six yards. That's seventh best among running backs in the league so far this season. It would probably be a little bit better if he didn't leave two games early this year of the six that they've played, right? Four healthy games that he's played the whole time, 95 rushing yards per game. Two games that he got injured, had to leave early, 30 rushing yards per game, obviously way fewer attempts because he's just not out there. If he's able to stay healthy, he's going to have a monster game. I've just been burned by him in both of the games that he got hurt and left early. I had been on Aaron Jones. So I'm gun shy at this point. But if you want to take anybody's overs on the Vikings uh, on their offense, it's either him or Ty Chandler or both because you can get whatever you want against this Rams D-line. I will also say TJ Hawkinson is back in the lineup. That might eat into Aaron Jones' reception stuff a little bit, but Aaron Jones has been a top three receiver out of the backfield uh, on the season so far. and has always been an incredible pass catcher and runner after the catch. So uh, I'm not worried about TJ Hawkinson taking his stuff in the middle of the field just yet, but it's something to keep an eye out for. Hawkinson's line is only at about 24 and a half yards. Jumping into the Rams offense. This offense has been hampered by the fact that it goes down early. Like I said, bottom five team in the first half in terms of point differential. So if you believe that's going to continue against such a good first half team, they should be passing a bit more. But their stats really tell that story. 15th in passing yards, but only 22nd in pass EPA. The yards are there because they have to throw the ball because they're down so often. By the way, they have uh, the third most amount of time trailing the other team in uh, on the season right now. So that's what I mean here by trailing, not only in the first half, but for the majority of the game, third most amount of time in the games that they play where they're trailing this season. So that's why the pass yards are high, but it doesn't mean they're a very good passing team until they get Cooper cut back. And eventually Puka Nakua, who I don't think is going to play in this one, but should be back available for week nine. Rushing yards, they're 26th because they don't get the chance to do it as much, or at least not with the lead, but they still have the 10th best rush EPA. And you should know that this team's probably still going to run the ball, even if they're losing, they run the ball the third most when they're trailing by seven plus points. So all this to say, Sean McVay really, really wants to run the ball, um, but he's been forced to pass a lot more this season. Same concept on the other side of the ball. It's just like these teams are mirroring each other on defense and offense. On defense, the Vikes, they have to, uh, they allow passing yards to the tune of the third most because the other team has to throw against them, right? They actually have the third best pass EPA. There's just so many attempts against them. Third most attempts, third most yards, right? But when you look at the rush stuff, that's the other part of this. The Maybe the biggest pass funnel in the league because of the fact that they're leading for most of the game. They have the fifth most amount of minutes this season where they're leading uh, the other team. So the complete opposite of the, the LA Rams, giving up the second fewest rushing yards, first in rush EPA. They get a ton of pressure. They blitz the most. They get the number one pr uh, pressure on the quarterback. And there's a big reason that they're already in the backfield before you're able to get the ball into your running back's hand, right? They have the second best adjusted yards before contact on defense. So yeah, it's going to be tough to run the ball. We're going to look at Kyron Williams stuff in a sec. But let's start with Stafford because the key thing with Stafford that I want to start with is he is 33rd. Mind you, there's 32 teams. That means that he is worse than most of the quarterbacks that have played this season in completion per percentage under pressure. So when he's under pressure, he's not very good. And he's been under pressure a decent amount. Uh, now, their offensive line has been better at pass blocking than rush blocking only because it's been putrid at rush blocking for the, uh, the, the Rams here. But they are 13th in limiting QB pressure. It's just that they're going up against Brian Flores' defense, which means the number one pressure percentage defense that is going to blitz the most. And the offensive line has been a major problem for the Rams this season. So I'm worried about Stafford, but I will say the short yardage stuff is probably there. If you want the pass completions, I think that's a better play than the yards. I will trust the yards because I think if he gets 22 to 25 completions, he's good for the yards. But he's got Cooper cutback, which means they're going to be a lot more effective on third down. Just doesn't mean that he's going to be throwing the ball as far down the field. That would be to 2-2 Atwell. But let's get into the wide receivers. Cup is back, missed four games after a nice start to the season in his first game at 14 catches and a million and a half targets. Second game was already putting together a decent game, got hurt, had a quiet first half, but was picking it up, then got hurt, missed the next four games. I like the receptions more for Cooper because 
of the fact, one, we know that there's not going to be much time for Stafford to throw because he's going to be going up against the best blitzing defense in the league. He's got Cooper Cup, who's got a very short ADOT in part because that's what the Rams have to do is run shorter routes with their amazing route runner, wide receiver, and Cup. Uh, and Stafford is going to find him on third down. He's going to find him within 10 yards very consistently. I think the, the yards are not a big deal. We've got Jordan Whittington is also out in this game. Um, so some injuries on, on, for, on the wide receivers still for the Rams, including Puka, who I don't think is going to play. So Cooper is going to be targeted probably another 14 times in this game. It's just it's screaming for it. You have to get the ball out early, and you can't run it nearly as effectively against the Vikings. That screams Cooper Cup receptions, right? If you wanted to take yards, I actually think 2-2 is still a pretty good play for the yards. He's gone over the number that he's got in this game every game this season that he's played 39 and a half receiving yards it's a pretty good over for Tutu Atwell but I really love the receptions for Cup he's at six and a half it doesn't scare me with 14 targets I might even ladder him all the way up to nine or ten Kyron Williams love this man the only reason I'm still in my fantasy league is because Kyron Williams scores a touchdown or two per game he's at 18 and a half rushing attempts and here's the conflicting info that I was giving you earlier which is Sean McVay wants to run the ball this man has gone over 18 and a half rush attempts in the last four games and they haven't been winning very much. So, and they haven't been leading at all. I just told you they've been uh, losing the fifth most in the league this season, right? However, they still run the ball when they're losing. That's the thing. Minnesota allows the fewest rush attempts, but this would be one of the only teams in the league where I would consider an over on rush attempts for the opposing running back. Not doing it this game. I would lean to the under. Now that you've got Cooper cut back, you're not going to see rushes on as many key plays for the Rams. But McVay was basically going, I, st I have to run the ball with Kyron on third and five because that's a better play than throwing the ball to the wide receivers that we have left on this team right now, right? No offense to those guys, but they ain't Cooper Cup, and they certainly ain't Puka Nakua either. So it's really been about running the ball on third down and even running when they're losing. Highest run percentage in the league when trailing by seven or more points. And with Cooper Cup back, fewer third down runs probably likely. This team runs the ball the third most on third down. So they're looking to run as much as they can. They just have been losing so much with that horrible defense. They haven't had the chance to do it. I do think that defense is going to give up points again early and often to this Viking squad. And we're going to see Kyron Williams not get as many rushes. 18 and a half is a, is a lean to the under for me. It's minus 130. So we'll see if that drops down or not before I actually make that play. One last reminder, outlier.bet. Best tool around, one-stop shop for everything you need when you're looking for this betting research that you're doing, as I'm doing as well on the live show. You've probably seen me use it. I've got a seven-day free trial with a link that's in the description of the video. If you do want to test it out before ever having to purchase anything, go ahead and give that link a try. I'm going to be coming back with the live show on Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Also going to have NBA video up for you in the morning ahead of Thursday slate. So make sure you check all that out. Until I see you all next, happy betting.